When you do a background check, it's a lot like fishing. In fishing, you bait your hook with a piece of something, throw it in the water, and if you're lucky, the bait comes back with more than you started with. Ideally, you catch a fish. Today, our bait will be an address, and our water is the internet. Our fish is going to be any useful information that we catch with this address. We can fish for an address in many places. Since everyone knows about Google, I'll save it for last. First, I'll show you the specialty search engines that few people know about. These will tell you if the person owns the place, if they rent, and maybe even who lives with them. You'll also learn if it's a real physical address or just a concealed mail drop. People often use mail drops for privacy, such as when they're engaging in risky activities, but don't want you to know where they really live. It's perfectly okay to have a mail drop, but it's shady to cover up the fact by referring to it as a suite or apartment. It's not a suite when there's no lights, no phone, and no office furniture. So if you see this, ask yourself what else they're trying to conceal. The quickest way to tell if the address is a concealed or commercially rented mail drop is simply to Google the entire address without the suite or apartment number. When your address belongs to a Staples or UPS store, the answer is obvious. But you can't always find out this way. So let's find out more at melissadata.com. Melissa Data is free, and it gives you the name connected with an address. This may or may not be the owner, but we'll verify owners later when we get to the property records. Now watch what happens when we enter in a New York City address of someone who lives in a 22nd floor apartment building. As you can see, it tells you up top that the address is verified for mail delivery. If you left the apartment off, it would even advise you that the address needs one. The four-digit codes in blue are links to give you even more details, such as whether UPS or FedEx will deliver there. Towards the middle of the page, you can see this is a residential address, and better yet, who may live there. Most reverse lookups won't provide this information for a New York City apartment building, so this is a good catch. Now, let's try with an address we know is a concealed mail drop. This time, it tells you right off the bat that this is not a residential address. In red, it lists this address as belonging to a Commercial Mail Receiving Agency, or CMRA. The code AS10 is a link with even more details. Also notice that the address type is a business, and it doesn't give the name. This is not surprising, because this is simply a Dropbox. Aside from melissadata.com, here are other free sites to find out who's behind an address. Feel free to pause the video and write these down if you need to. I've listed white pages, people smart, and search bug, but there are many more. Some of these will provide the phone numbers and the names and ages of the people who have lived there. Our next stop will be the free online property records, which are found in all the 50 states. To collect property taxes, state governments record not only who owns the property, but also how much it's worth. Sometimes they'll even have the deed, which shows that the property is jointly owned by a spouse. Very important if the person claims to be single. If the person you're looking for owns the place, there's a good chance they live there now. But if your subject does not own the property, meaning that you could not find them in the property records, it could mean they rent, they moved elsewhere, or they're lying about where they live. That's why it's important to rely on many sources of information before you jump to conclusions. We're now at publicrecords.netronline.com. Let's search state records on a property in Roswell, Georgia. Just enter in the city and state and click on convert so you can see the county records where the property is located. Then select the county. When in doubt, start your search with the County Assessor and County Tax Commissioner. Our first stop is at the County Assessor's page where you can often search by name or address. Let's search by address to find out who owns the property. So we've entered the address on Jade Cove Drive in Roswell, Georgia. You can immediately see the address along with the names of the owners. For more, click on the link in blue on the left. This brings up 
not only the middle initial and the last names of the owners, but also the value of both their land and their property. Usually you can assume that property owners are the ones who currently live there. If not the case, it almost always means the person living there is renting the place. Our next stop is the tax commissioner link we saw earlier. This is where you can find the taxes that were paid out on the property and often who paid it and when. So you can know who's owned the property and for how long. Taxes tell a story. If your subject says he's owned the place for years, but you see that somebody else paid the taxes on it, something is obviously fishy. In the present case, Janice Cohen has paid taxes on this property since 2004. You'd know that by clicking on the blue links on the left. Before that, it was paid by her husband, or at least a man with the same last name. Presumably, they got divorced and she got the house. If both a man and woman are paying the property taxes, you can bet they're still married. So watch out, singles. Your boyfriend may have a wife. It's now time for Google. To avoid missing anything important, you'll want to Google an address the way it's likely to appear online. How it appears depends entirely on the source. For example, you'd expect the full address to appear in a formal court document. But what about the blog of a complaining neighbor or the ad for a moving yard sale? In these cases, you wouldn't expect the full address to be listed at all. To cover all bases, your second Google search should include just the main part of the address offset in quotes. For best results, put quotes around the house number and name of the street. Leave out the ST, the APT, or other abbreviations. These can be listed in several ways, and you don't want to exclude results because you guessed wrong. Example 2 also shows how to narrow your leads by adding an apartment number after the quoted phrase. Example 3 shows you how to hunt for neighbors in the same apartment building. If you get too many hits, you can add the name of the person you're looking for, such as in example 4. To get recent results, click on Google search tools after your search and filter for the last year or two only. For more on this, see the Sleuth for the Truth video, Google Like a Pro. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like or subscribe or refer to your friends. Thanks a lot.